Welcome. I was so delighted to be with you in the Lord's Word, in His Word. Greetings, this is our Dolores Johnson Spears, pastor of Kingdom Church House of Prayer. You tonight, I'm just going to lift up a prayer. May the Lord bless and keep us. May He cause His face to shine upon us. May He lift up His countenance unto us and grant us His peace in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen, amen, and amen. Good morning. Welcome to Fresh Word. We're so delighted to be here with you today. Pastor Dolores Johnson Spears here with you from Albany, Georgia, Kingdom Church House of Prayer. We're going to be sharing from uh, the book of John, St. John, the sixth chapter. Just a powerful chapter. The entire Bible is powerful. The book of John is powerful. The book of John is a book that I suggest or counsel uh, those that are uh, newly uh, members of the family of God to just digest the book of John, to eat the book of John, to embrace the book of John because it just gives us a beautiful introduction to the family of God. The teaching of Jesus Christ is so plentiful in the book of John. John being the youngest disciple just uh, embraced Jesus to the point of physically uh, putting his head on his uh, breast from time to time to just let Jesus know I love you, uh, my Savior, my Lord. And I do believe uh, John benefited so much from that uh, relationship that he had with Jesus. If you remember, uh, at the cross, he was there with Mary. John did not run. Now, we're not comparing the disciples and saying who's this and who's that. Peter was the leader of the group, and no matter what else happened, that stood. Uh, I just want to recognize John a little bit, the author of this book. Uh, he took his time, and he physically displayed the love that he had for Jesus Christ by, by, by just physically being near him. And I believe he received some importation, spiritual importation, spiritual stress. Uh, for just embracing Jesus to the core, to the point that he was uh, given responsibility, uh, given the responsibility of taking care of uh, Jesus' mother. Uh, he was at the cross uh, with Jesus' mother, and Jesus literally told him, take care of my mother. Take, and, and, and said, Mary is your mother now. Literally said, Mary is your mother now. So this is the same John that has written this, this account. And we're with chapter 6. Got some very strong nuggets from chapter 6 that I believe will encourage you. So we're going to read a few portions of chapter 6. And then I'll just begin to tell some parts of it. And, and I encourage you to read the entire chapter. It may very well be the longest chapter in the book of John. Uh, the longest chapter. Take your time and read it and ask the Holy Spirit to impart it unto you. Uh, so, so, so we'll just begin to read. We're going to start with verse 5. Chapter 6, verse 5. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread and be that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, and every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, this is verse 9, There is a lad here which have five barley loaves and two small fish. But what are they among so many? We want to just encourage you. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord, we're going to be going over some reasons why, where, whereby it's going to benefit you greatly to be in the family of God. It's going to benefit you greatly to know Jesus Christ as Lord. So if you can picture Jesus um, and the disciples, uh, Jesus is teaching, or he has taught the people, and so many people are there, 3,000, 5,000 in the 
Alabama account, and they're there, and they're hungry. It's, you know, it's just that time of day, and they're hungry. And uh, the disciples were literally saying, what are we going to do? And Jesus already knew what he would do. And sometimes Jesus will test you. He'll give you opportunity to seek out his spirit, to give the right answer. And he already knew what he was going to do. And, uh, you know, that they were going through, you know, can we go and buy this and buy that and buy enough for the people? And, and so Andrew, uh, Peter's brother, finally uh, said, there's a lad here. Uh, Jesus already knew what he was going to do. The point I want to make right now is that there's not another power source on this earth. I don't care. I know there are um, idols. I know people are worshiping other other gods, but you don't have any documentation where another god produced food. That we're going to see uh, Jesus feeding the five thousand uh, from two little fish and five loaves of bread. How many of you know that when Jesus blesses, uh, many times things will just multiply. When you allow Jesus to bless, when you take the time to ask. Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, you really asking the Father to bless in the name of Jesus Christ, whether it's your job, whether it's your children, whether it's a new project. When you take the time to commit it unto God and ask for his blessing, uh, there's a multiplication factor usually involved in that answer. And I don't know of any other God, I've never read any other documentation of any other God multi multiplying like that. You know, I just don't know of any other. And 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 we want to get real. We just want to get real. We're in a time now where sometimes we may need multiplication. We may need a blessing from the Lord. We may, need, uh, may even need food. And we have a Father who's known for producing food when it's needed. Who's known? Even if it has to be manna from heaven, and we know the account of the children, the Hebrew children who needed food, and Moses was leading them in the desert to get them to the promised land, and they ran out of food or didn't have enough food, and, 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 or, or, or were just complaining and wanted, wanted a special type of food. Anyway, God rained a manna from heaven, and type of uh, a wafer it seems from heaven. Uh, it tastes like honey. Uh, I just don't, I've never read an account of any other God doing that. What are we doing? Why are we wasting time with other gods? Why are we wasting time uh, uh, receiving communication, reading about other gods? When we have our Lord and Savior, we have a father, we have Jehovah Rohi, our shepherd, who uh, just multiplies, blesses and multiplies and takes care of his children in many times very creative ways, ways that uh, uh, no other God matches what our God can do. So I just encourage you to, if you're not in the family of God, it's just time. I encourage you to get into the family of God because you may need it some miracles from time to time, but we have a Father who can. Our Father is more than enough. He's, he's immutable. He's uh, omniscient. Uh, he, he can do all things. What a mighty God we serve. Uh, we cannot begin to measure His power. His power is infinite. His power is limitless. We, we cannot measure His power. Who would not serve a God like that? So as we progress in chapter 6, take the time and read it, you're going to see that he fed 5,000 with two little fish and five loaves of bread. And they had so much left over. I believe they ended up with 12 baskets. So much food left over. And, 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 and Jesus, uh, part of his ministry, and Lord help us, as the ministers and pastors understand, that power is supposed to be a part of our ministry. We give God the glory for teaching the word, for the Holy Spirit teaching us the word, uh, for, for giving us subjects and topics to, 
to teach uh, Bible chapters, books, to teach the book of John, the book of Acts, just to teach the word of God, the power should accompany our teaching. But Jesus Christ is our model. He is our model. And power accompanied his teaching. And he was always showing the Father's power, the power of heaven. Uh, remember in Luke where he approaches this woman who's about to bury her son and he was moved out of compassion and at the end of the day that young man lived. I mean they were about to bury him. He was in the box and everything. Power accompanied the teachings of Jesus Christ and we cannot leave that element out. God knows what he's doing. He knows that when we have a testimony about power, when, when God uh, demonstrates his glory, his power to the people, some people are going to be drawn. That's a way of lifting Jesus higher. As we lift him higher, people are going to be drawn unto Jesus Christ. So power was always a part of his teaching. He would always um, just exemplify the power of heaven, the glory of God, the presence of God. And people always walked away with a testimony of a witness to a miracle. That's just our God. So we can't come as a denomination. We can't come uh, saying that, you know, uh, we don't exemplify power anymore. We don't demonstrate the glory of God anymore. God says lay hands on the sick. That's what we need to do. We need to be led by the Spirit of God as for the timing. And he didn't say lay hands on everybody because either he said, you know, he could not do a lot of work in his hometown because people took him lightly because he was a homeboy and they did not receive many miracles there because uh, they didn't believe him. They just did not believe him. So I just want to encourage you to get close to God, to do not allow anybody to limit what God wants to do in your life. If he wants you to demonstrate his power, demonstrate his glory, allow the spirit to flow in you, to do whatever the spirit will, First Corinthians 12, 11, whatever the spirit wills, you can't go around making up stuff there. We just can't just do what we want to do and force the spirit to act and force the power to come. No, it is God's will, his perfect will that he will use from time to time a word of wisdom, a word of uh, knowledge, a prophetic word, uh, uh, healing and miracles. That's God's business. And he determines when he wants it to happen. But we need to be open and we need to be willing. So we see Jesus as our model. And he has taken his time and he has fed all of these people. And I believe everybody there knew that he started with two little fish and five loaves of bread. Our God is magnificent. Our God is excellent. Oh, how excellent is the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong power. The righteous can run into his name and find safety. So uh, this is still chapter 6. And we're going to read another portion of chapter 6 and talk about it. The, uh, Jesus really speaks in chapter 6. And he's going to begin to talk about the bread of life. He's going to begin to start an analogy of himself as food, as bread, as meat. And, and we want to take the time to really look at this. And it emphasizes that we need to be full. I believe it was last week when I talked about Philip was full of the Holy Ghost. It emphasizes in chapter 6 of St. John the necessity of, of eating the bread of life, of getting full of the bread of life, or eating meat that we know not of. There's a meat... Uh, that you may not know of, but Jesus encourages us to eat that meat. And we know at the end of the day, the meat is really the bread of life, who is Jesus Christ himself. How do we eat Jesus? We study his word because John, uh, the first chapter of John says that Jesus is the word. He is the word. 
try as we study his word, we're going to get full of his word. And uh, we want to be full of that too as the soul. We need to be full. Uh, you know, with airplanes, you pressurize that airplane before that airplane takes off. You know, I don't know all the physics about it, but that airplane has to be pressurized. And as that airplane is pressurized, it's going to deal with the pressures that are outside of that airplane. It's going to deal with those pressures. You know, a lot of rain, a lot of wind, or whatever. Uh, the airplane is prepared. One of the ways is to pressurize that airplane. And Jesus is telling us in chapter 6, in order to be ready for the persecution that he said would come, Matthew 5, take the time and read that entire chapter. He said the persecution would come, then we have to be full of the Spirit of God because it prepares us full of the Word of God, full of the meat, full of the bread, which is Jesus himself. And Jesus is the Word. Let's read a, another portion just to give you an idea. Uh, if you look at St. John 6 and 27, St. John in, uh, 6 and 27, labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you for him, uh, hath God the Father's seal. So uh, he's saying, uh, get the meat that you want to give you eternal life. And I don't think we talk about heaven enough. Get, get full of the meat that's going to ensure that you will have eternal life. And I mean, he talked about it in chapter 6. He keeps bringing up eternal life. So Jesus brings up eternal life. What do you think about us? You think we need to know about it? Preachers, you think we need to preach about eternal life? Teachers, you think we need to teach about eternal life? Don't forget Luke 16. Take your time. Go back and read it. It is not an accidental chapter. It, it, it is in the Bible, I believe, because God says, don't leave this out. They must know what happens after they leave this earth. I heard one preacher say, there is an eternity for everybody. But we're not all going to the same place. You know, I know we don't even like to talk about this. But I cannot take this lightly. There's too much happening in the world today. There's too, too, too many terrible things are happening. And we need to prepare for our eternity. Not that we're going now. I'm not advocating going before your time. But we need to be ready because that preacher spoke the truth that morning. He said we have eternal life. Whether we want it or not, uh, it won't be in the same place. In chapter 16, in the book of Luke, I'll just say one little word about it. There was a rich man and a poor man. The poor man went in the bosom of Abraham. This earth was not his eternity. This earth was not the end of his life. His spirit was still alive. He was still alive. The spirit is the true man. The rich man was still alive. He left this earth, but he was still alive. And he was in torment, in flames. You, we cannot ignore that. We cannot ignore the word of God concerning eternity. So there is a heaven and there's a hell. And we'll talk about that on another day. But there, I guarantee you, there's a heaven and there's a hell. And the Lord wants us to be uh, ready for it. I believe that's why Jesus keeps bringing up eternity in chapter 6. He doesn't want us to miss it. He didn't want the people of that day to miss it. And uh, so, so chapter 6, verse 27, we just read it. We're going to read it again. Labor not for the meat which perishes, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him have God the Father sealed. We give God the glory and we give him the praise that there is an eternal resting place. And one way to get ready for it is to begin to eat the meat of God. Begin to eat the bread of life. Jesus Christ is the bread of life. 
St. John, the first chapter, says, The Word of God is Jesus Christ indeed. So when we study the Word of God, when we really meditate on the Word of God, then we're eating Jesus. We're literally eating uh, uh, His Word. We're eating His uh, who He is. We're eating and we grow in that. We get uh, stronger because we're meditating on the Word of God. What did Joshua say? Uh, in order to have great success in this life, then we have to meditate on the Word day and night. That's what Joshua said in the Old Testament. And we know in the New uh, the new covenant saint knows that Jesus is the bread of life. He is the word of God. We're going to read a little bit more. Uh, verse 20, 32 and verse 33. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh. Remember, I, I just read the bread of, of God is he. The bread of God is not the bread that you buy at the store made out of the wheat. The bread of God is he. The bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. So we're emphasizing again that the bread of life is Jesus Christ. And this chapter is going to repeat over and over again that you need the bread of life. You're challenged today. You need the bread of life. You have complications in your life today. You need the bread of life. Doesn't mean everything is going to be perfect once you give your life to Jesus Christ and begin to partake of him. Begin to read his word and study his word, which is the bread of life. Uh, doesn't mean everything is going to be perfect, but I tell you what, Jesus Christ has the answer. The Holy Spirit has the answer. The Father has the answer. I don't care what we're looking for today. I don't care what the challenge is today. Jesus has the answer. We thank God for the doctor. We thank God for the therapist, the psychologist. We thank God for the psychiatrist. We thank God for the counselors, the teachers. But without Jesus, we may get a partial truth. We may get a temporary truth. We won't get it all. There's a guarantee that the creator of the universe, if we seek him on it, if it's something according to his perfect will that he wants us to know on this side, on this earth, he will get it to us. He will get it to us. And many times medical doctors will do all they know to do. And I thank God for medical doctors. I go to the doctor, I thank God for them. But sometimes they're limited and there are a few honest ones that will tell you, I don't know. I don't understand why you're having this these symptoms. I tell you the bread of life knows. He knows everything. He knows where it came from. He knows when it started. He knows whether it's coming from an emotional trauma that you had that you don't even remember you had. He knows uh, 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 whether or not it can ever be healed by man. He knows that you need a relationship with Jesus Christ so the Holy Spirit can go down deeply into your being and in your emotions and heal that trauma that you don't even remember. You don't even remember it happened. The Holy Spirit is the greatest counselor. When I say the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in any account, they are one. And we're not going to have a debate about, you know, uh, who's the greatest or whatever. They are one. So if I mention Jesus, Jesus said, I just do whatever the Father tells me to do. If I mention the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit was sent by the Father to comfort. When Jesus got ready to go, he said, we're going to send you some help. We're going to send the comforter. We're going to send the Holy Spirit. So, so I've, you know, I've had people to debate. Well, 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 Jesus didn't, and, and the Holy Spirit, and, the, and the, you know, and they didn't do this, and what? they're one. They are one. Don't try to divide them. They are one. 
Because I said, Father over here, and I said, Jesus over here, don't get confused. Remember, Jesus said, I, I don't do anything unless the Father tells me to do it. I don't speak unless the Father tells me to speak. I don't do any activity unless he tells me to do it. So they're one. They're one. And, and you, you need more understanding about that. It's okay. Ask the Holy Spirit to help. There are a lot of things I'm still learning. I don't understand it all. But I ask the Holy Spirit for help. He is the greatest teacher. Uh, he can bring us into all. The Bible says all truth. All truth. Praise God. We give God the glory. So Jesus is emphasizing you need the bread of life. A relationship with the bread of life. Who is Jesus. It just said it is he. Who is Jesus. Will connect you with this eternity. This eternal life. That you're going to have no matter what. And we want to have it with Jesus. We want to have this eternal life with Jesus. And Jesus took the time the Father told him to do. In the sixth chapter of John, a year ago, you know, when John wrote it, it was probably like a letter, did not have chapter, did not have chapter divides. But this particular portion of this book really talks about get the bread of life. Have a relationship with Jesus so you can have eternal life. So you can have eternal life. I just really sometimes think, you know, if everybody could come back, they would get a strength on this so quickly. They may have been confused when they left this world, but if they could come back, they would get a strength on this subject about eternal life. So quickly, Luke 16, that rich man talked to uh, uh, Jesus and, and, and really was trying to come back. He said, you know, please, please have Abraham. Can he just, you know, can the poor man bring me some water? I'm, I'm burning up. I, I'm tormented in the flames. And, you know, go tell my brother not to come here. Go, Yes, Luke 16, you have the rich man making reference to his brothers. I don't want my brothers to come here. Go tell him not to come here. So all I'm saying is, we have some witnesses. We have some witnesses. And by the Spirit of God, I do believe that God, you know, many times will let us know. Will give us dreams. Will just let us know. A lot of times we pray, Lord, where did my brother go? Where did my sister go when they left this world? But I'm not going to talk about that too much today. But Jesus linked a relationship with him to eternity. There is an eternity and he wants us to go. He wants us to be ready. Pray. Uh, let us look at 44, the still John 6 and 44. No man can come to me except the Father which have sent me draw him and I will raise him up. At the last day, still talking about the last day, still talking about raising people up, still connecting it with eternity, with eternity. So, uh, uh, this is a very important point that's in chapter 6 that Jesus emphasizes, and I really believe he wants us to know. Okay, we pray for people to get saved, Christians that are listening, we pray for your relatives, we pray for our family members. We pray for our friends, but this is an important point. Look at verse 44. It says God has to draw them. They have to be drawn by the Spirit of God. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me. Draw him and I will raise him up at the last day. So there is a drawing. There is a drawing. And many times God uses the Holy Spirit to draw people to himself. There has to be a drawing. So sometimes we think, oh, he's just so stubborn. She won't listen. Be stubborn. Begin to pray, Holy Spirit, draw them. Begin to pray, Holy Spirit, draw them. And even it says that the uh, laborers are few, that, that the harvest is plentiful. It's like John 4 and 4 talks about the harvest being plentiful. So the laborers are few. Uh, let's be ready to lead people to Christ. You know, we're part of that labor group. As Christians, let's stay ready. Let's stay ready. To lead them to Christ. Remember Philip from last week. He led them. He led that Ethiopian to Christ. He 
He knew what was important. Uh, heaven shouts, and I believe they have celebrations when people get saved. When we get blessed physically, you know, I was healed a, a couple of years ago by the grace of God, and uh, doctors were involved, but I know the healing came from God, and I believe hell, heaven celebrated. But I believe they celebrate more when people get saved, when people give their lives to Jesus Christ. So let's begin to pray for our loved ones and those that are near and dear to us, that they will hear the voice of the good shepherd, the voice of a stranger they will not follow, that they will hear the truth and they'll be wrong. Let's begin to pray that. We just read that there has to be a drawing. Oh God, draw my brother, draw my cousin, draw my neighbor. Oh God, draw my neighbor to you. I don't know how you want to do it, but draw my neighbor to you. And I believe it's uh, a, a very appropriate to pray. God sent a labor, sent a labor across the path. Uh, Philip was a laborer, and he was ready to go across the path of the Ethiopian's chariot and even run upon that chariot and join himself up upon that chariot and told the Ethiopians about Jesus Christ. That's Acts uh, chapter 8. So let us be ready to tell people about Jesus and allow the Holy Spirit to draw, but let's pray for the drawing. Let's ask God to draw them uh, by His Spirit so that they'll want it, that they'll want it. Have you seen people that just seem not to even want it? And you begin to talk to them and they just shut you down and shut you off. And Jesus did say, you know, don't give that which is holy to the dogs and, you know, don't, don't put your pearls before swine. You know, I'm not calling anybody a swine or dog, but God himself knows who's ready. He knows who wants it. And so let's be led by the Spirit. Let's be led by the Spirit of God. I do believe it is that an appropriate prayer to say, God, send somebody across their path, a labor across their path, that they will hear, that they will listen to, that they will listen to. Because I want them to have this eternal life. God, you know, I'm a family member, and they get tired of me talking, and they look in my face all the time, and they're sick of me talking about Jesus. Will you send somebody, a laborer across that path that will tell them about Jesus? God, will you draw them by your spirit? Draw them, give them a hunger and a thirst after this righteousness to know the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I just wanted to share that to you because I believe that was just very, very, very important that we know that people have to be drawn by the Spirit of God. All right, let's look at verse 47. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting night. There he goes again. That's about the fourth time. I haven't read them all, but about four or five times in chapter 6. He talked about everlasting life. He talked about eternity. That this whole thing is going to end up in everlasting life. Christians, be encouraged. Some of you have been persecuted. Some of you have been lied on. Be encouraged. Continue to eat this bread of life. Because it's going to end up in eternity. And there is no end to eternity. When you think about it, God help us digest this truth. There is no end to eternity. And it's going to end up when we take the time to go after the bread of life and eat the word of God and study Jesus' word and study Jesus Christ himself who is the word of God. It's going to end up in eternity where we will live rejoicing every day. We'll talk about heaven another time. But it's worth it. I'm telling you, it is worth it. And when we have a planned trip to Hawaii, to California, you know, we get our clothes together, we pack, we get our suitcase ready. Uh, we let people know sometimes that we're going. But we prepare, we prepare. There's nothing wrong with preparing. God wants us to be ready. You don't know the day or the hour. We really don't know the day or the hour when our name will be called. We do have promises. God has told some of us, uh, 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 he's given us, uh, uh, some of us, an idea of how long that we'll be on this earth. This is God's business now. This is God's business. Uh, in reference to ministry, there's some things I need you to do. There's some things I want you to do before you leave this earth. 
And so it's very, very important that we realize that there is an eternity. And honoring the bread of life, honoring the bread of life, embracing the bread of life, studying the word of God is going to get us ready for this eternity. We just give God the glory. Now, I just want to make something clear. I didn't say we knew, you know, the day of the hour. I did not say that. But there are prophets, there are men and women of God, where God shared with them some of the ministry that needed to go forth that he had called them to do. And he did not give them a day and hour, but he gave them an idea of how long it was going to take them to complete their ministry and their calling. We just give God the glory. I didn't want anybody confused about that. Praise God. Look at 51. Verse 51, it says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Praise God. He's talking about going to the cross. Jesus came to buy us back. He bought us back. Someone had to sacrifice. The blood had to be shed for the atonement. He bought us back. He paid the price so, so we could have this eternal life. Jesus paid the price. He literally gave up his life. So that we, if we believed in him, we could have eternal life. We want to focus on having great meals every day. Dining every day. Eating the bread of life. The life of Jesus Christ. The word of Jesus Christ. We're going to end with verse 63. This is a very long chapter. Take your time. Read it over and over again. St. John 6. And uh, all of the chapter so that we'll have an understanding of how important it is for us to digest the words of the bread of life. Verse 63, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The words that I speak unto you, this bread, which is the word of God, is spirit and it is life. And we know there needs to be a communication. There needs to be a communication daily. Give us this day our daily bread. There needs to be constant communication with the Spirit of the living God. With our Father. And I'm going to read it one more time. It is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Okay, these words, the word of God, Jesus, these words are spirit and they are life. How do we grow in the spirit? How do we communicate with a father who is spirit? Okay, we must worship him, St. John 4 says. We must worship him in, in what? Spirit and truth. And one way to walk in the spirit is to study the bread of life. Study the word of God. Study the word of God. We just share that the Word of God is spirit, and the Word of God is life. In one way, we can communicate with Father, who is a spirit, and we can worship Him in spirit and in truth, because He is a spirit, is to get full of the spirit. And one way to do that is to study the Word of God, which is spirit, we just read it, it is spirit, and it is life. Let us understand what Jesus said when he said, I have meat to eat that you know not of. And then he began to use the analogy of bread. I am the bread of life. Jesus is the bread of life. I just want to encourage you to just get to know Jesus. Get to know him. He is the bread of life. And a relationship with him is so attached to our eternity. Let us pray. May the Lord bless and keep us. May he cause his face to shine upon us. May he lift up his countenance unto us and grant us his peace. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.
Yes, amen, amen.